Come what are you doing? What? I'm trying to get my dog. You got your dog here. You got your dog in the recording. <laughs> I love it. Look at your dog. What is your dog's name? This is Mango. Mango. He almost looks like a mango. <laughs> <laughs> so it, Hi. is he tame? It's a she. Is she tame? Yes, she is tamed. Have you ever tamed a narwhal? Uh, never. It's a fish. It has a horn. It is. It has a it has a horn coming out of the center of its head, and it's a uh, it's almost like the unicorn of the sea. Really? Yes, really. Oh, I never heard of it. It's amazing. It's an amazing fish, and amazingly enough, uh, it doesn't get anything caught on the horn. Wow, it's a unicorn fish. It's, it's, well, they don't call it unicorn, but that's the uh, that's what people say. That's what people say. It's 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 a unicorn. It's a unicorn. Unicorn of the sea. Of the sea, or or the you know the lake, or wherever it is. I think it's it's uh, it's it's relative to the uh, Pacific Ocean, but there are other ancestries that that um, that are from other areas. Wow. Is that where Chicken of the Sea is from? <laughs> That's pretty good. You're joking, right? What are you talking about? What are we talking about? First off, I um, should introduce nar you. Narwhal. I should introduce you to begin with. Uh, Esther Koo joins us. My name is Gary Busey. This is the Jeff Richard Show, and I am uh, guest hosting for the Jeff Richard Show himself. Oh, is Jeff Richard sick right he's now? He's not What's here. Going on? Well, there's it, there are circumstances that he's is something wrong with his car or his motorcycle. I don't know if he drives. A, oh, I don't know if he drives a motorcycle. I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know Jeff Richards knew you. Absolutely. How do you think he got me for this show? I mean, you guys must be friends. We must be. <laughs> are you? We are friends. Yes, we are. But oh, you know. Okay. There's a lot about him I don't know. We don't reveal too much about each other. We just chit chat and play. Sometimes we play cards. Well, that's how like guys can be friends with each other and not know anything for years. And what about women? Women, we could meet like another girl and like they'll know our deepest, darkest secrets in the first five minutes. Why is that? Because we're more secure with ourselves than you guys are. How do you know that I'm a man? Um, I've heard about You've you. You've read Wikipedia, but do you think Wikipedia is the real answer for for um, for actual truth? To be honest, I didn't look at I didn't look at your Wikipedia. I just have seen you on TV, and I've seen you on like lists. You know, yeah, like celebrities most likely to die soon. Uh oh. I mean, I'm just I might just be like pulling that out of my. You ass, might be. But I don't remember exactly. What the list was. I don't mean to scare you. When am I sorry? When am I supposed to die? Um, probably like late two thousands. Well, let's just let's just keep the interview going while we uh, while we're doing this. But that's an upsetting thing to hear. Okay, so that's upsetting. No, it's actually good because you were supposed to die like ten years ago, and you're still here. Well, there are positives to it. I understand that, but. We have an interview to do, and I have an interview to get through. And let me just begin by asking you, when flying, do you use the overhead bin or do you use the space in between your feet in the, in the floor area? I use both. Okay, but no one's ever said both before. I mean, which one do you prefer then? Let me ask you that. I prefer the one in front of my feet because I can keep my snacks there. So if I'm hungry during takeoff, I could eat my snacks right away rather than having to wait till we take off and then I have to get up and get my snacks. Why don't you eat your snacks before you get on the plane? I do that too. I just, you know, we're always hungry, girls. And what kind of snacks do you eat? Uh, anything chocolate, candy, um, you know, like flips, chocolate-covered pretzels, 
munchies, the Oreo Chex Mex mix. Chex Mex mix? Is that what it's called? Um, I forget what it's called. I think it's like the, you know, it's covered in like Oreo cookie dust. Now you live in my... Have you had that? I've never had that and I don't want to talk about it anymore because it, it almost alarms me. I mean, this this thing that that, that 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 food is now dusted, you know, I don't like that. You know, it just... It's more coated than dusted. Now, you live in Miami, am I right? You live in Miami? Yes. Florida? I do. You drink a lot of mm-hmm. orange juice? I love orange juice. Do you like freshly squeezed orange juice? But if you go to the grocery stores here, you know what's crazy, Gary Busey? They sell oranges from California in Florida. And how are they? They're fine, but it's like that's a lot of truck drivers who had to bring them here when we could just eat Florida oranges. But why don't... But it's because our government is corrupt. They cut down a bunch of citrus trees back in the 50s, and they claimed that there was disease on the trees, and they made everybody cut their citrus trees and... A lot of housewives made their money from selling orange juice or mangoes and jam that they made out of these fruits. And then the government just made everybody cut them. So you're saying if you want a Florida orange, you got to get it on the black market? No, I'm saying it's weird that we eat California oranges when we live in an orange state. Who is we? Floridians. You consider yourself a Floridian? That's that's my driver's license, is Florida. You live in Florida? Yes, we went over this, Gary. Right, I'm just recapping. How far okay. How far are you from Mickey Mouse in Disney World? Um, like three hours. Which direction? North. You're almost laughing at me. I haven't been. Oh, I was just smiling. I wasn't even laughing. Why aren't you laughing? You don't think I'm funny? I mean, you were funny. Before I was about to die? Well, I don't know. You seem a little, like, sedated right now. Are you on something? I'm on, I'm on Klonopin. Oh, okay. See what I mean? Like, you seem a little, I guess, yourself. When I wake up, I like to relax. A lot of people like to get up, take a walk, run around, have breakfast. When I wake up, I like to relax. I like to even, sometimes I even go back to sleep. I like to relax so much. Well, that's good for you. Have you ever punched a man in the face? No. Have you ever punched a woman in the face? No. Have you? No. Have you ever been in a fist fight? Mm, define fist fight. Running around, dancing around, acting like fools, jumping up and down, goblin style, Halloween style. Of course. That's a good answer. <laughs> how did your, how did your, did you have a, a dental appointment today? I had a doctor's appointment. What, do you mind talking about the, the details of the doctor's appointment or no? That's confidential, you you pervert. Okay, so it's something something happened in the doctor's office. No, something happened that I had to go to the doctor's you office. Can't, you can't get into details. I'd rather not talk about I it. I like your hair. I think it looks great. Is it red? Thank you. I brought my dog. I said, make my hair the same color as my dog. And they did, and so it shall. Into the into the deep. Do you know, do you know the pond? Do you, do you know the poem? Into the deep beyond. I am in the deep beyond. I'm going out in the sea. I'm coming back next to you, next to me, upside down. I'm the sun. I'm the tree. Do you know that song? It's a poem. No, is it? Is it by Shel Silverstein? It's by it's by uh, Guido McTee. He was a, a concert oboe player. I know that you're an oboe player, aren't you? I used to be. Your first chair. Yeah. Tell me about that. Well, I started playing oboe when I was 10, and I had an amazing band director who chose the oboe for me, probably because I looked smart. I was wearing, like, glasses and had buck teeth, and he was probably like, oh, I'm going to have her play the oboe. And I got really good at it, you know? I was, like, playing, like, Mozart concertos and everything. 
That's incredible. Yeah, I think that's when I really peaked, when I was 13. So you were 13 years old and you were at max capacity for being an oboe player. Did you lose the desire to be an oboe player or was it just maybe it got too difficult or something? No, I I did like it because I was good at it. But once I went to high school, our band director was a joke. So I quit. What do you mean joke? What? Well, he just, he would like give awards willy nilly, not based on merit. And I'm like, what kind of, what kind of shit is this? What do you mean willy nilly? I don't think I've ever heard that. Like a participation trophy. Everybody you gets. You know, whereas like, right. Whereas when I was in grade school, I had to earn my first chair and I earned my way to first chair oval player in the state of Illinois. And I was proud of that. But then when I went to high school, they were all like, oh, best best flute player goes to whoever. And it was like the worst player just to like make them feel good. But don't you feel that's a microcosm for how life is in general, public? It's basically, it's high school all over again. I mean, I like your sweater, so, you, you, you know, you can go first. I like your, you know, do you think it's, is it is it a tit for tat situation? And in the sense that, I mean, we are we are pre-chosen in some degree based on how we look, how we act, so on and so forth. I mean, I don't appreciate you bringing up my tits in this. I don't think I did. You said tit for tat. That's pretty good. Now you got, you got in some trouble for, uh, for, 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 uh, bringing, bringing men mentioned to some uh, Asian stereotypes. You were something about a guy and you were saying Asian stereotypes. How do you feel about yeah, and, guess, and guess what? And guess what that is? What is it? It's called punching up. What does that mean? Well, you know, Asian women have been oppressed and controlled by Asian men for centuries. They've bound our feet, our ancestors feet. And so for me to make fun of Asian men, I'm actually punching up. Well, I'm agreeing with you. Yeah. I think you should be able to say whatever you want, however you feel. So I, I'm agreeing yeah, with you. Yeah, I know. Everybody, everybody, everybody's such a sensitive little bitch these days. They want to be offended by everything. First off, I, I'm offended by the word bitch. That's because you're a little bitch. Let's talk about your dog. Or, or so I've heard. Let's talk about your dog some more. Where did you get it? Where did it come from? It's not a it, it's a her. Where did her come from? <laughs> Where did she come from? Sure. <laughs> well, she came from China. Originally. They were going to they were going to eat her. She was for sale in the meat markets and I think she saw a lot of her siblings get roasted and um sold. Roasted not into like roast battle, but like you like flambéed. Oh, do you know about roast battle? No, like she was going to get eaten as like a delicacy. And then so they brought her to the States and then I signed up to rescue her. And then what happened? And then she loves me. You feed her kibbles or do you feed her the mushy stuff? Well, I can't. I'm trying to get her to eat kibble, but she had to have a lot of her teeth extracted because they were rotting. So... I feed her wet food. You know how you get her on the dry stuff? How? Just give her dry stuff. I know, but she doesn't eat it. Put her in a room with so, it and leave her in there. She'll eat it. Do you know a good doggy dentist? I need to find, like, implants. I need to, like... She has no teeth, that, so she can't eat the dry food. That's actually what I go to. I go to a doggy dentist. It's better. It's it's almost like going to the college for dentistry. It's Oh, no wonder you have bad breath. So I've heard. Okay, so this is going... What did you read that in Wikipedia? No, I haven't been to your Wikipedia. Have you been to mine? No, I haven't. Okay, then. Touche, motherfucker. How do you feel about yogurt? Um... Too much milk. Well, they have milk-free. They have dairy-free yogurt. Do they? Sure. You get almond yogurt. I used to eat yogurt when I was a kid, but now I try not to eat too much dairy. 
What do you eat? Except for cheese on pizza. You just like things that are dusted. No. That's what you said. I like. You said I like crackers that are dusted. You said I like to put them in front where my feet are, and then I like to eat them before I get it on the plane. I like to eat them after. You said all these different things. I can go back and 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 show you the tape, but uh, I don't. Have you joined? Have you joined the media now? You're taking everything out of context. Well, this will all be edited in a way that makes more sense later. Okay. Um. Anyway, I like to eat pizza. I like to eat short ribs. What's your favorite memory from the future? Um, I guess it would have to be from a dream, right? Don't ask me. I guess that's a trick question, right? Let's talk about dreams then. What do you? Okay. How do you feel about dreams, and what is your relationship to having dreams? Well, I think um, I think your subconscious mind works things out in your dreams. So, <laughs> I think that things that you want to happen might happen in your dreams, or things that you're worried about. If you're always worrying about something, it might come alive in your dream. Do you ever dream about a gold bar and then wake up and think it's right by your stomach, but it's not because it was just a dream? No, I haven't had that Have you ever dream. dreamed about having a plate of spaghetti and then you wake up, it's not under your head, and it freaks you out? No, but when I watched Nightmare on Elm Street, I had nightmares of sausage heads on pizzas. I'm going to ask you again, what's your relationship with yogurt? Um, you know, I used to enjoy yogurt, but now I'm not really a consumer of yogurt as of lately. Why do you think we're on this planet? What do you think, what do you think our if mission is, if anything, you know, and don't you freak out sometimes by just looking at your hands and going, what the hell are these things? Where do they come from? What am I doing with these? Look at the fingers. Um, I think, I don't know what our mission is. I mean, maybe to help each other. To give. Yeah, to help out our neighbors. Tell me about your Unless neighbors. Unless your neighbors suck. You didn't always live in Miami. No. You, I grew up in you Chicago. You used to grow up in Chicago. Your nose is running. <laughs> is it? Is it cold over there? Is it really running? Yeah, you have like a booger, a wet Do one. I really? You want to wipe no. your nose? Should I? Uh, now it's going in your mouth. Should yeah, I wipe my nose? Should. Or you have like an assistant? You want me to wipe my assistant's nose? Why would that? No, ask your assistant to wipe your Donnie. nose. Donnie, Donnie, come over here. Donnie, can you can you wipe his nose? And now I, that's I all I think you're screwing with me. I don't your, think there's anything dripping out of my nose. I see it. It's going in your mouth. Have you ever heard of the expression ease into yourself? No. Me either. Maybe I should wipe this. Oh, this is this is the first this is the first I've heard of it. Have you ever been bitten by an alligator? No. Have you? No. Good for us. You, Let's celebrate. Do you think Stew is a good name for a rabbit? Mm, I guess. Do you get it? You don't understand what I'm doing. Stew. Rabbit. Rabbit stew? Rabbit stew? Rabbit, that's, that was a joke. Oh. Some of these are jokes. Your delivery is kind of dry while your nose is wet. Is my nose running? Yeah. Let me take care of it. See? I wasn't lying to you. When was the last time you wore a football jersey? 
last week. What was the jersey, and why did you do that? Um, because it's like made of mesh material, so it's very breathable. So it's actually it, a football jersey makes a nice cover up, a beach cover up, like when you're wearing a bikini underneath. But but don't you find it don't you find it difficult to to wear in the sense that it's polyester? Um, no, it's pretty thin, so. It doesn't bug me because it's like an oversized. I have like a size large football jersey. What about the humidity? You must be used to the humidity from being in Chicago. So Florida isn't so bad. It's nice. I like it. It keeps Humidity keeps your skin moist so you don't age as fast as California where it's a desert and it dries out your skin nonstop over the years. It's better. It's it'll have been better to be in humid climates. But it's harder to breathe. So if you have any kind of lung issues, you know, I have a little bit of a breathing thing. You know, I have a little oh, bit. Oh, okay. I breathe a little bit like that, and it's not so easy for me. But I know what you're saying in general. You know, that's the same reason I don't use aftershave, or when I do use aftershave, it has little to no alcohol in it. So that it it doesn't dry my skin, and uh, but I also don't care. Are you sober? It's part of my look to look like this. I look like Gary Busey. I am Gary Busey. You know, there's nothing I can do about that. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing we could do about the way we look, except for dye our hair the same color as our dogs. Are you making no, fun I'm of just me? No, relating back to what happened earlier. Okay. So now you do stand up comedy. You want to tell me about that or? What's that like for you? How's, how's, how's Florida for stand-up comedy? It's actually been great. During the pandemic, like, we've been open. and You have a store? What do you mean shows. we've been open? You, you have a store? No, like Florida, we. Oh, you in Florida? Yeah. So you've been open. So, so people come in there, they're not wearing masks, they're just in the, in the crowd. Watching the shows, everything's 1984 all of again. Or not 84, but, well, maybe 84. But you know what I'm saying, 1980s, where people didn't really care. I was doing cocaine, you know, off the backseat of uh, at El Camino's and, you know, Honda Accords, early Honda Accords, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I, I feel like we've been kind of fortunate to have been open. But now everybody's traveling again. I'm going to Michigan in a couple weeks. Where are you going to Michigan? I'll be in um, Howard City, Michigan. It's actually called Howard City? I think so. Are you doing a stand-up show? Yeah, I'm performing at the Back Alley Comedy Club. Have you been there? I've never been there. I've heard about it. I've heard about the Back Alley Comedy Club. I don't know the one that's... Why don't you meet me there? Well, because I don't think that's possible. I'm going to be on a short raft. I'm going. Oh. I'm going on a raft okay. expedition that's probably going to take most of uh, most of the winter. I'm looking for seal pigeons. Okay. Good luck. Have you ever met a seal pigeon? I didn't know they had Who's them. Who's they? Floridians. What color is your hair? Is that is it a red color? Uh, it's like ashy brown. How did you arrive at that color? Um, I just picked to a, I just pointed a, pointed to a picture in a magazine. I said, that's what I like. That's it. Just like that. And just like that. And then after a year of trial and error, then the hairstylist gets it right. And what about your friends? Don't you miss your friends in California or do you have more friends in Florida? Yeah, I miss my friends in California. I miss my friends in New York. But what do you I'll mean? be there Wait, again did you, soon. You, did you spend some time in New York mm -hmm. doing stand-up? Yeah. And how was that for you? It was great. And what was so great about it? Um, There's just so many stages and so many clubs to perform at that it's just not. Is it more supportive than California? <laughs> No, it's still clicky. It's still, you know, there's tons of comedians, but 
it's just the energy just can't be beat because you're not like you do a set, you get in your car and sit in traffic, which kind of kills the energy. In New York, the energy just stays alive. You do a set at Stand Up New York, you take a bus to comic strip, you're there in 15 minutes and you get up on stage and it's fire all over again. Why didn't you just become a model? Uh, I'm not tall enough. How tall are you? Five four. Not quite, not quite tall enough. But you could be you. And my dog, my dog is like twelve inches. That was my line. <laughs> so tell me about your refrigerator. Is it stackable? I mean, is there multiple compartments, and what do you put in there, and how does it work? Um, it's like has like two doors. And the bottom is for the freezer. Although the next fridge I get, I want to have the freezer on the left side. Why? Because I, I eat ice cream. I, I freeze my mangoes. And I want to have easier access to the freezer. You freeze your mangoes? That was my yeah. line. <laughs> See, I could do stand-up. I wouldn't go to New York to do stand-up. I'd go to Florida to do stand-up because of the oranges and Mickey Mouse. Do you like Mickey Mouse? Yeah. Why? I don't know. Who doesn't like Mickey Mouse? That's a great answer. It's true. Why wouldn't you like that little mouse? Right. What did Mickey Mouse do to you? Have we canceled Mickey Mouse we better yet? better not. What's it? I'm sure he did something How racist. come people like rats, but they, or they, why do they like mice, but they don't like rats? Hmm. Because mice are cuter. They're white, and rats are like, you know, they eat your garbage. Do you have any questions for me? Um, yeah. Is it cold where you are? You're wearing a hat. Like, you look like you're in I do this instead of working out. It creates a... a Wear a hat. Well, I wear the hat. I wear the big puffy jacket because, because when you sweat, you release water from your inner inner bo- inner body and your inner boils. So so when I sweat, oh. it it simulates a workout, and uh, I'm able to, you know, lose a little bit of weight and also feel the rush of having just worked out. That's a good idea. Where do you get your ideas? Um, I, I smoke a lot of marijuana. Now, isn't that hard to get in Florida because it's not legal? Um, no, because everything's corrupt here, so it's very easy to get, actually. And there's all these dispensaries. There's medical. Oh, that's medical's legal, legal. So you could just say that you have a, you know, a, a foot that hurts. Do you go in yeah. there and say, I got a foot that hurts, give me some marijuana? How do you go about getting marijuana? Or do you just find a guy that's your neighbor, somebody that lives near you, that has marijuana that can sell it to you? How do you go about? I just go on stage and I talk about how I smoke weed. And then people come up to me afterwards at the shows and say, were you kidding about the weed? I said, no. Do you have some? And they go, yeah, you want to smoke? And then they give me weed. It's a great system. I know. Like, why would I kid about loving weed? Sometimes I fascinate that I'm a longshoreman. What is just, that? You don't know what a longshoreman is? This guy that works on the sh- shore. He's oh. a longshoreman. They work, they work on the docks. They work near the ships. You know, sometimes I fantasize being a longshoreman and just taking the day off. That must be fun. You're near the water... It's a beautiful view. Yeah. You know, like, it's way, it's a way better job than working at, like, CVS, where they don't even have windows. They don't have windows. They have fake windows. Well, some CVSs do now, and I'm like, I feel better for the people who work there. Why do you, why do you seek out or, or desire a window so much? Well, because then it doesn't feel like you're boxed in. Boxed in. Boxed yeah. in how? My dog likes how do you, you. How can you tell he's looking at the floor and wagging its tail? Because she's like panting. She's like. <laughs> 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 
this is one of the strangest interviews I've ever done, and that's considering that I'm as normal as I can be. I'm living my life to the really? fullest. Have you ever heard the expression, ease into yourself? No, you already asked no, I, me well, that. I want to know if you know it. I've no? never heard it. Is that even an, is that an expression? Maybe, maybe not. I never Doesn't heard. Doesn't matter. It. Don't. And I've heard. I've heard a lot of expressions, and I even own a dictionary. What's of your cliches. favorite cliche, and what's your favorite expression? Mm. I don't really have one. Well, that would be two. So you don't have two. <laughs> Isn't yeah, that right, Koo? Either. Your name is Koo. Either. Your name is Koo. People call me Cuckoo. And there's also Kukuru, and there's also Kukukuru. Do you know oh, Rod Koo? When I was a kid. Or Rod Koo? Played no. baseball in the 80s. You know that commercial for Cocoa Puffs? Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs? Yeah, when that commercial came out, that's what everybody at school called me, Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. They call you the whole thing. Now, how yeah. did you react to that? Did that make you feel special or ostracized? I liked it. It was fun. Do you have any social media that you want to plug? Um, yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at Esther Cuckoo or Instagram at Esther Cuckoo. Or you could just go to my website and sign up for my email list so you'll find out when I'm performing near your town. My town? Or, you know, I meant your as in, like, maybe somebody's watching. Your, R, Y-O-U-R, or Y-O-U, whatever that little thing you put up, and then R-E. Apostrophe? Yeah. No, Y-O-U-R. What's your website address? It's estherku.com. So everything is Esther Cuckoo, but then your website's Esther Koo. Oh, my God. Don't You're you find right. that to be almost misleading? Yeah, I should fix that. It was great to have you on the show, and I really appreciate you uh, giving your candor, giving your uh, inside of an outside, and your and your eyes, and, and, and your your beautiful hair color, and your dog is. I think he's more than panting. You might want to get him checked out. <laughs> Maybe hit him with. It's because she likes you. Hit, that means she likes you. Hit her with the garden hose. Do you have a doggy? Not anymore. I do have oh. a son, though. That's worse. Um, well, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Couldn't have done it without you, and I really do. Uh, I'm going to get out to Florida. I can't wait to see when your stand-up shows. Oh, yeah. Come out. You have relatives I here? I don't have any relatives there anymore. Lost them oh, with okay. the dog. Well, I'm here. All right. Well, listen, Esther, thank you so much. And again, Esther Koo, Esther Koo for the hour. You can go to Esther, Th everything Esther Koo Koo, rewind the tape. And, 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 and it was a great interview. And I really enjoyed it. I really had a good time. Thank you very much. Me too. Okay, Thank Esther, you. Okay, Esther, bye-bye. Bye. This is Gary Busey, and this is The Jeff Richard Show. And you're watching The Jeff Richard Show. For all things The Jeff Richard Show, go to thejeffrichardshow.com or thejeffrichardshow.com. And now a song from Meanest Man Contest. Great. Was that fun? I mean, yeah, you're looking, you're looking at me the whole time like, you're like, what, what's going to happen next? <laughs> but I tried to keep it, you know, kind of nuts, like Gary Busey, right? Yes, that was very good. Was it good? Yes, that was very good. Yes, that was very good.